Ciao guys and welcome back to Lampis. Today we are so excited, we just landed in Windhoek, Namibia. We are back for our safari trip. video we want to share with you how do we afford to travel I mean you know both of us have full-time jobs and we do travel in particular this year we have managed to travel way yes. more than uh, we have traveled before so if you are looking for some tips on how to afford to travel budgeting for traveling and just how to organize travels this video is for, for you, you. Ale and I are very adventurous, like yes. since we've been living together, we have done a couple of trips. Not a couple, many <laughs> trips. We have done many trips, but it took a little bit of time to perfectionate it, to get really a method that allowed us to organize in a short time trips and affordable trips because we like to travel a lot. And, we don't uh, make a lot of money, so and budgeting we don't make is a lot always... of money. So budgeting, it always <laughs> needs to be there. And, and also the fact that we have been traveling already also when we were students. So back in the days, money was even more of an issue than it is now. But that, don't let that prevent you from traveling. No. And I hope with these tips, you're going to find them useful. So you can start enjoying your travel and traveling more. If you like that, again, it comes down to what you, you enjoy like to do. So, tip number, number one. one. As we already said, budgeting. Budgeting is fundamental, especially if you want to travel a lot during the, your year. So, you need to sit down at the beginning of, your, of the year with your partner and just check what are your general finances status. If you have debt, how much you are earning, how much are you spending for, uh, for living, like rent, food, the car, gasoline, all these kind of things. For us, at the beginning of the year, it's really fundamental that we sit down a weekend and we, find, and we manage our finances. Yes, so a yearly budget is fundamental. I mean, budget is important, but a yearly budget, that is very important because we do that every year in January. We sit down and we look at how much we are earning. We want to know how much we plan to save and how much can we afford or how much can we take out of that and spend on traveling you want to know that at the beginning of the year so you don't get in a situation where either you have traveled too much and like you haven't saved anything or you haven't you don't have money to exactly. to do other things but again comes down to put your money on things that you really enjoy and when you do that on a yearly budget you have kind of a good overview at the beginning of the year how you want to spend your money and just make sure you dedicate a portion of that to travel at the yes. beginning of the year okay then we comes to the second big tip that is travel off season that is so fundamental because traveling off season is something that will allow you to spare a lot of money and those money can be invested for many other holidays or short uh, weekends off with your partner so that is fundamental for you that when you look for a location you also check what, I, what is the peak time for for holidays for other people to go there so you can just book a, a little bit before the peak or a little bit later after I think uh, I will give a practical example when we did our Malta trip Mm -hmm. It was off peak season in our hotel, which was absolutely amazing. amazing. Like yes. I will show, I will add some pictures here. It was beautiful. The view, the room size, the shower. I had like one side was just a window. It was absolutely amazing. beautiful. But we paid only three hundred, and I know had we gone during the peak season, I think yes. that would cost us eight hundred. Yes, to a thousand. Like, to a thousand. It was beautiful. So that is those. If you go off season, just a little bit. After the peak season, everything is cheaper. And again, like you have mentioned, tranquility, you know, that inner peace that you're looking for when you're on holiday. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's taken away by just oh, so many tourists that you the can't queue, even hear the queue. Or the museum, or this kind of stuff. It's so, just, off no. peak season is save your cash, 
and it's it's it makes your travel also more relaxing and more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah, even even the food at the restaurants. If you go during the peak season, the quality decreases because of course there are more people. And they can like they are always full and they cannot put the same attention uh, that to all the details like when the they details. have less people. Yeah, yeah. I mean oh. we are foodie, so uh, that's why Ali is talking about food. Point food. number three is to have a flexible job. Flexible it is job. important. I think when you have a flexible job, it allows you, it gives you room to travel off season, to yes. be honest. When you don't have a flexible job, then you kind of only, you can only travel when everybody else is on it's, holiday because that holiday. is the holiday season also, maybe like December or like mid-August if you are in Europe or July if you are living in Germany exactly. and those are the expensive um, period to travel. So if you have a flexible job, make use of that, take advantage of that and make sure that you plan your holiday when all your colleagues are in the office. Exactly. So flexibility, I know that I have, had I chosen a science job, I wouldn't be as flexible as my current job as a consultant and I'm really enjoying the fact that I have that flexibility. We come to Namibia anytime we want to, we go to Italy anytime we want yeah, to, as long as you take your Mac, yeah, and that's fine. Sometimes I just need to take my computer with me and that's it. I spend 30 minutes or all these uh, like that uh, moments of the trip when you are traveling, for example, the, the airplane, the flights, uh, or you are moving to a place to another in the car. It's work time. I just work time. Like I said, I go sit there, I open my computer and I do my job, but I'm on holiday. When I when I arrive to the, the place that I was supposed to arrive, I just close my computer and, and I go to the beach. I know. Remember when I was writing my PhD thesis? Yes. That was also the same. Like during the PhD thesis writing, it didn't make sense just to sit at home. You don't write 24 hours, you know, 24 yes. hours a day. So what I did back in the day, I would go, we would just go on holiday, like we did Puglia, we did Sicily, and we would just go. I wake up usually at five in the morning, everybody's still sleeping. I have um, uh, like five up to eight, maybe one hour to two hours of intense writing. I'm done. We start holidays no more. And I, I like that flexibility. Oh, or yes. if you're writing a publication, it's also the time to go on holiday and you can still do your work. So I mean, life is not about working you are working for living Work. you are not living yeah. for working so please just make priority in your life the next point what is the next point like for us this is a very important point for us and i think it make a huge impact also yes. in terms of how much money we spend on traveling having a minimal lifestyle at home what do we mean by that we live in a very small apartment and that was a decision that we took because we knew we don't want to spend long weekends at home. Exactly. We really want to be traveling. We don't spend holidays at home. So we all our furnitures we bought them second hand. Mm -hmm. That is saving a lot of money. And especially if you're just young and started working, I don't think it's important to buy expensive furniture because after a year or two, you're moving out of the apartment. Yeah. And that is such a time. Exactly. But I would say, generally speaking, have like living within your mean uh, it means like just everyday life you don't go out every single day for dinner or, or lunch because you don't have time to cook you make sure that you have you sit down and you cook your own meals that is way better and it's going to cost way cheaper like you know there are some kind of lifestyles that bring you in a way that you are always spending money you, you never ha you never have time and that therefore you are spending more money because you don't have our time. You do, I don't have time to cook. I prefer to pass <laughs> by the shop and pick up a sandwich or uh, just go to the restaurant, have my dinner or call a uh, takeaway and just uh, have some food delivered at home. That is not, it's not healthy. It's not, it's not good also. It's not, I, I don't think it's about... I don't think it's not health, but I think that sounds more like you're on holiday 24-7. And if you're already on holiday all the time, then this probably you're going to have less money to go somewhere to have holiday. And I feel like, I don't know if you're going to feel the difference when you're on holiday. For me, it's important that when I'm at home, I'm at home. And when I go on holiday, I enjoy going out to have a cappuccino. I enjoy going out to have a dinner. Otherwise, I just feel like, oh, I have a dinner also at home. Now, where is the special... Things. Think when yeah. I'm on holiday, I in, you know when I'm on holiday, I want to go and order a bottle of wine and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing that every day, I feel like it takes away. 
it not it only takes like, it takes value. away the cash, but it also takes away the, the value, value of that yes. feeling of being on That's holiday. True. So just minimize and home life be home life. Of course, it comes down to what we enjoy the most and in this context and for us, traveling is more important than us owning the, things, the most amazing car. So I think another essential thing when it comes to traveling and how we do it, book everything by yourself if yes. possible i have be seen your people... own but like be your own travel agent <laughs> yes <laughs> book everything on by yourself like it's the easiest way you you know you don't have to pay for extra charges mm -hmm. commission all these things and you can book your flight ticket you can book your hotel your airbnb and everything and online everything. by yourself and just check in you don't have to pay a third person especially if you're traveling on the budget i'm sure you don't have money to pay for that yes so, definitely book everything by yourself and it's, it's everything it, by like yourself. for us it's also like something that we enjoy yeah. actually like uh, ah, what after dinner yes yeah, after dressed, dinner you want to you, from where exactly yeah, where can we go next <laughs> and we sit down we look at the places and we say oh we do like round trip we have we use like a tool from google map that allow you to do like a round trip uh, and uh, check the kilometers all very this kind nice of stuff. you know how much well you're going to spend it's, it's actually very nice i, I enjoy doing those yes. things like, stop 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 here how many kilometers we are probably going to drive on this trip and we we do some intensive calculation yes for we the cost do. of oil per liter and how many how yeah, much kind money of do car, we need no this car consume more <laughs> uh, we are kind of crazy <laughs> yeah but you know it's, it's not it's, it's sometimes good to pay attention to details because it honestly it saves you some money yeah but it's, it's also like we enjoy to do that like it's not about also only saving money it's something that we it's that we enjoy, know, we enjoy yes. to do yeah. together yeah so yeah so if you just try to put by yourself you may save yourself you know you may save i would say about five to ten percent of your mm -hmm. cash and then you have that extra gain for another weekend in copenhagen <laughs> we can, yes, another short trip and another point the last happen. one there is a like this point that i really care for because for me sometimes when we talk about with people of the trip that we are doing Especially they're always camping. Like, uh, camping why are you going for camping but uh, i will never leave my double bed uh, at home and go sleep at home, on a mattress uh, yes. in the tent <laughs> there is a big that i'm paying for and call it holiday yeah there is a big distinguish between traveling and having holiday like adventurous traveling for adventure yes and just being in a five-star hotel, hotel despite and everything is served and i mean they are both really nice but uh, they are us. completely different <laughs> there we are talking about two things that are completely no they are also for us we also enjoy to have holidays but uh, it, for me like holidays is short and it's relaxing. When I think about all it is like five star hotel, spa, everything, three days like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and back. Then you're bored. Then, I, then I'm bored, then I'm bored because three days of relaxing and spa, what do you do next? Traveling, on the other hand, is like really uh, completely different. You go, you discover a place that you have never seen that you are fascinating because maybe there is some natural or there are some. Uh, culture that you have, you want to experience uh, and you put yourself in a learning process because uh, you you open yourself to a different experience when you book everything in lodges and five star hotels trust me your budget if you're on a safari is going to be almost 100 times more yeah. than camping yeah. we pay about 10 euros per night for yeah. a campsite and a safari all this luxury safari tent they cost about a hundred per night hundred euros per night they're super expensive these luxury tents which are like uh, like a three-star hotel already set up in a tent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the point here is really don't let the fact that you can't afford a lodge and a five-star hotel prevent you from prevent traveling, you for traveling. We, yeah, that in is europe true. we do a lot of airbnb these are beautiful places small apartments it costs way cheaper than, than a hotel, hotel room and usually a hotel room is like yes. a half of the size of an airbnb and it costs i would say about 60 percent more and when you are camping in namibia i i, I wouldn't want to do a safari in namibia in a, in a lodge 
it's the camping site here very beautiful in most cases you have firewood the grill place is already set up yes everything is nice and clean you have your own bathroom facilities in most camping places why i i left my place to come here and experience safari why would i sleep in a lodge on mm -hmm. a safari i want to wake up like you said and and see you know Damara dig digs just passing by and I want to sleep and hear the, you know, like the hyenas the crying in the background. Okay. The jackals. So yeah. of, maybe, uh -huh. maybe people are somewhere to freak out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that, yeah, it just, anyway, they don't come close to you. Mm -hmm. In Namibia, I would say most of the camping site, apart from one camping site we are doing, which is free camping, yes. all these campsites are fenced off. We are not talking about free camping, we are talking about camping site and camping sites are safe. Yep. So, again. Final, final point. So, book affordable accommodation. Airbnb, camping versus booking five-star hotels, lodges, and luxury permanent tents. Yeah, and distinguish between holiday and traveling. So guys, this is how we do it. This is how we afford to travel. This is how we budget for our travels. And this is how we cut costs when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. I hope you find these tips helpful i'm not saying everybody should do it the same way but this is how we do it and i hope you find this tip in some way helpful to you and, and before we go i want to announce the winner for our giveaway wow 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 <laughs> let me see i have to see where i wrote that down because i've selected the winners for the for the cleaning cleansing brush i have selected letty letitia's Letty Letitia's, but I will also leave all these details in a post, I think, on YouTube community and mm -hmm. on Instagram because I don't think, in case somebody's not watching, I don't want them to miss that. And then the other, the ordinary set is going to Tessa Teshi. It's difficult. Tessa, Tessa Teshi or Tessa Chi. It's difficult to pronounce this. Mm -hmm. And then the book is going to Mega, Mega Twilight. I think it's like that. It's Mega <laughs> Twilight, yeah. But like I'm saying, I'm going to make just a short you know like screenshots and add them in the in a youtube post video that was it we have to hurry up right now yes. pack everything and get we have like an hour car. and we are going to swakop mount yes and then of course swakop mount we go further on really real stuff like get yes. to observe speed scope, uh, elephants and stuff erindi we have a lot of place to see bye 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 mm, that's not our thing okay Ciao, ciao, ciao. See you in our next video. Ciao, ciao. ciao.